Hi guys, how are you all? Ryan here for The London Craftsman and today's video is all about testing out these Makita guide rail tracks, plunge saw tracks, um, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've got two versions here. I've got the three meter version with no joints and I've got two of the older versions, the 1.4s, um, to make a 2.8 meter version. Um, and today's video is all about comparing the cut with the joint and the cut without the joint to see how straight it is. Also tons more, I'm gonna be running through a lot more information, um, including other tracks that may fit the Makita. So stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. Right, so let's start. What we're going to do first is we're going to have a reference cut and we're going to be using the three meter track, which we've just bought. Been wanting one of these for maybe two years now, realistically, since I bought the saw, maybe a bit longer. And we generally don't do a lot of cutting on, um, in the workshop, it's mainly on site. So we didn't really think we're going to need it as much. But since I've been buying a lot of materials, as materials prices is just going blowing sky high and buying them in bulk, I'm having to cut my own materials which means I need to cut them more efficiently, even though we've got a table saw here um, that we're basically on and making, where it's not quite finished with the ultimate workbench build. Again, if you're interested in the ultimate workbench build, see the old, um, the playlists for that um, as we're halfway through that. So what I'm gonna do is do a little reference cut with the three meter right now. I'm gonna place that on a scrap of birch, okay? And there we go. I'm just going to trim. I'm not going to be that accurate where it, where it's going to be, but I'm just going to skim maybe 10 mil off, give or take, like so. And then that is going to be our reference cut. We know that when we cut that, that is going to be as straight as an arrow. This bench is completely flat. It's completely level. There is nothing wrong with this bench. So I know that that cut is as good as it's going to be because it's got no joints. Get my saw, which is already set up at the right depth. And with our ultimate workbench build, we have a cyclone, if you want to have a look. A cyclone in there with our hoover on the other side and our hoover turns on when we turn the saw on. So, right, so let's go ahead and do that gut. Let's plug that back in. Again, we're not finished the bench, bit of a pain in the ass. First cut, and that's our reference cut. Now we've done that cut, let's go ahead and grab our jointed version. So if you have a look here, the way they join is you've got one bar at the back, held on with grub screws, and one at the front. I am actually missing a grub screw there, but I still have one nice and tight. And remember, your cut is only as good as this joint. If you've had these tracks for a while and you've been bashing them around in your case, and they've not been protected, and you're resting the case on edge, or when you're cutting, you lean it up against the wall, they're gonna get damaged. It's not gonna be true. So what you could do is just take them to an ironmonger's or anything like that, get a um, fine tooth blade or a metal blade and cut them nice and square again. But again, it's all down to your saw, if you've got a nice square saw. If it's out by a tenth of a millimeter, one end, by the time you connect them together, it will probably be out three mil or something like that over three meters. So be aware. So let me put that up against this reference cut that we have. Just to start with, I wanna see how straight this is without forcing it. Right, so far I can see it going off a little bit there. Can you see down here? 
Yeah, that's, that's no good, is it? So it's following this line all the way. All this is nice and tight up against my cut. And then it's, when it starts, well, basically it's from the second track all the way. I'm saying there's a three mil gap there. Right, so what we can do now is let's just go ahead and cut this and just double check to see what we actually have because we can use that as a straight edge. Okay, you can always also see both of these tracks in action also. You can see there's no joint, so if you've got any lumps and bumps where you have dropped here or um, you haven't lined them up properly, as you run your saw over, you may find that it's gonna wanna stop or jar on you. Um, okay, let's go ahead and just cut another 10 mil off or so. There's the joint, let's see what happens. No, it's okay. Sink, sink. I love that hoover. Have a go round and show them the hoover just in case anyone else wants to buy a decent one. 200 quid was cost us, it's the Makita LS something. Probably in my description. Well, I'll try and put it in there for you guys. But it turns on, so basically from that hoover, I've got an extension lead. And from that extension lead, I've got all my power tools and my table saw, and my router, and my thickness saw, and my chop saw. So whatever I turn on on this ultimate workbench, the hoover will turn on. And it's pretty quiet, you probably didn't hear it. Okay, so we've got that cut now. Let's put this one on. Basically, it's a long straight edge when you think about it. Plonk it on and see what we got. Yeah. If we're going tip to tip, that's touching there. That's touching there, I'm not forcing it. I'm gonna say that we've got a, between about a mil and a half to two mil gap. I'm probably gonna say closer to two mil. Which if you're building a wardrobe, and you're cutting yourself doors. Sides of carcasses aren't really critical. Um, they are and they're not. They are, you can get away with little bits here and there, quarter of a mil here, quarter, quarter of a mil there. But when it's doors and you've got maybe six doors up against each other and you want that nice three mil gap every single time and each one bellies in the middle, you're gonna have five or six mil gap in the middle and three mil at the top and bottom, which is gonna look awful which is gonna be unacceptable. This is why we never end up going down that route and we did very, very few cuts with the long track like this. Um, again, this is all down to what I have. It's an old track and it probably has been bashed around. I cannot um, give you any other um, examples other than the track that I've got. But at least we haven't got any lumps and bumps to go over the joints. Um, all right, anything else, Sean? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about advantages. Yeah. So advantages, it's got no joint. Um, you can do it all in one hit. You only need to mark two lines, possibly, top and bottom of the whole cut, rather than three or double checking, and you don't need to reference to make sure it's bent. So as you're placing this jointed version on, you might have to do three lines to make sure that the middle is in the right position. Um, any other positives um, of the longer track? Well, other than it looks nice and it's a great bit of kit, nice bit of engineering. Um, I'd say the disadvantages of having the three meter is that you need to store it somewhere. You need to have a long van. If you don't have an extra long van, you're gonna have it sailing over your head um, when you're going to site, aren't you? Um, have a look over here. We have this little case it came, on, came in um, and we just leave it in there and slide it directly underneath our bench because this bench is 3.6 meters long. So it's handy. It was gonna be in the, within the void here. That was the plan, but we can only access the void from that end. Obviously you can't slide it over that, that end. So um, disadvantages I'm saying on that side of thing is that you it's hard to store and you need to find somewhere to store it. And plus then you need to transport it on site is going to be tricky. Um, with the 
these joints, what we're going to talk about, just the downside is the joint, isn't it? Um, they can get bashed around pretty easy in the case. Um, what else, Sean? You need to rely on only two fit two bolts, two of these. So, two yeah, two bars, exactly. One at the front, one at the back, and they're only on one edge, not at the front. So I find that, I mean, it's the design of the track, isn't it? You, it's a really thin track. You, you can't get a bar in there. There's no way to connect those two. I mean, you know, anyone could not think of a way of connecting it there. So the only place that they could is here, which in theory is always been a flaw from the start, design flaw. Um, yeah, these grub screws do vibrate out every now and then you lose them. Um, I've already lost one. Even if you nip them up, they can move. Plus, you know, with the joint, you can get lumps and bumps. When you go over it, it can jar on you and give you a bit of a horrible saw cut edge. Um, on my particular track, the downside is when I'm cutting something 2.4 and 8 foot sheets, I've only got a 100 mil overhang both sides because it's the older track. You've got, what, you've got the newer one, haven't you? And they're both 1 1.5, which means you get about 100, well, you get 200 mil either side, don't you? So you've got 300 and the sheet or yeah, so you've got plenty. Um, which means when I'm cutting with the overhang with an extra long piece at this 2.8 track, my older track, as I'm plunging, the actual, these little guides, I mean, I don't go past these basically. So when I'm plunging, I make sure my track doesn't go past these because they're the bits that keep adjust nice and tight to your track. Um, it's very hard to be able to get that, that plunge saw to start right at the beginning without coming off before that point. And if you come off that before that point, it can wobble on you because it's not um, tight. So they're the downsides. Um, anything else to talk about, Sean? What about this? So it's totally different. Um, we're going to talk about another track. Okay. So completely different we're going off topic a little bit but i am going to do a video for you guys if you take a look around i have bought this about a year or so ago it was so cheap i couldn't resist 85 pounds a plunge saw with two of these 700s and i thought even if i don't use that these are worth 85 quid two of these to do your cross cuts if you've got a little trim excuse me if you've got a trim to cut if you've got small pieces to cut these are perfect and that's one thing I wanted to show you. They're compatible with the Makita. There we go. Spot on. And the blade lines up nicely with the rubber as well. So it literally is in the right position. Spot on. Um, 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 um. So I think that is it, guys. I mean, the moral of the story on this video is if you can afford it by yourself, an extra long track. I got this for 189 from Graham. I can't remember. I'll try and put a, a description up, a list in the description. Something Graham, and it was 189 quid. Everyone else was 220 quid and plus 60 quid delivery because it's extra long. They didn't charge me delivery. 189 quid all in. So I'm never I, I never I'm not looking back. You know, I think this is a great investment. And especially if you're doing multiple pull cuts, if you haven't got a big old table saw like I have, um, and you prefer to do all your cuts with the plunge saw, like I see a lot of people on YouTube do, Peter Millard does, um, a lot of other big guys there constantly using track saws and tracks and doing repetitive cuts. Um, remember, you can get parallel guides, you can get track guides, you can, you can, you can get square guides, you get lots of guides to help you with these things. But ultimately, I'd say if you can afford it, buy one. If you're doing lots of cuts, buy one. But if not, stick with the singles. Um, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, just put them in the description below, like usual. I try to get back to as many people as I can. Um, one other thing before we go is we're on 22,600 now, subscribers. I want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed, anyone, any patrons, anyone who donates money uh, to our channel to help us grow. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And to all the
guys that constantly get back to me after every video, give me the support. I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, but hit the like button, uh, follow us, all the usual gump that everyone says after a video, if you're liking my content, that is. Um, but apart from that, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm off on a off-roading holiday tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. Take it easy. Have a good one. Ciao for now.